Hi, I'm Jen Neiman, co-founder of Property Elite, Chartered Surveyor and APC Assessor. At Property Elite, we provide training and support for the APC, Asset RICS and FRICS qualifications. We cover all routes, pathways and geographic regions via our team of specialist consultants and trained assessors. This also includes the senior professional, specialist, academic and direct entry routes. In this week's podcast, I take a look at zoning, a method of valuation analysis for retail property. It's essential listening for all APC and SL RITS candidates with valuation as a technical competency. So first things first, zoning is not a method of measurement. This is a really common mistake that candidates make, so make sure that you don't mention it in the measurement of land and property competency. So what is zoning? Zoning is a method of valuation analysis. It follows a consistent unit of comparison to be calculated. This can then be used in comparable analysis when assessing rental value. A key term used today will be ITZA, referring to area in terms of zone A. This is the unit of comparison that's referred to in surveyors' valuation reports. Zoning is traditionally used for valuing retail property, specifically high street units where the retail frontage is particularly valuable. This is different to industrial and office properties, which are valued on a simple rate per square metre or per square foot basis. Zoning isn't typically used for larger retail units, such as department stores or for supermarkets, convenience stores or retail warehouses. This is because the large size would skew the zoned analysis, resulting in an unjustifiably high overall rent, even with an evidence-based quantum allowance applied. And more about this later on. So, zoning is based on the principle that the retail frontage is worth more than the ancillary areas. This is applied through the principle of halving back, meaning that each subsequent zone is worth half of the zone before. We use the term relativity to explain the relationship of each subsequent zone to the first zone, otherwise known as zone A. So this could then be expressed as A over 1, A over 2, A over 4 and so on. If you head to our blog, you'll find a really helpful example setting out how you can explain these zones in terms of relativity. You may find that some surveyors report zone D and then remainder. Others will report zone C and the remainder, so there'll be no zone D. This is generally related to how the evidence is analysed. So if the comparable evidence analyses use zone A and then remainder, then this is how the subject property should be analysed on a zone basis. For ancillary areas such as first floors or basements, the relativity applied should be directly related to how the evidence is devalued. Sometimes surveyors will include these areas within the ITZA unit. Others may apply a rental rate per square metre or per square foot to them. For example, a first floor could be valued at over 10, over 16 or over 20, or perhaps a flat rate of £1.50 per square foot could be applied. Again, This is based on the evidence and there are no set rules for the treatment of ancillary areas. So when a surveyor measures the net internal area of a retail unit, they should take sufficient dimensions to undertake a zoned analysis if appropriate. The standard depth of zone is 6.1 metres, i.e. 20 feet, but longer 9.14 metres, i.e. 30 feet zones are used in some locations such as Prime, Oxford Street and London. When the surveyor has calculated the area in each zone, i.e. A, B, C and so on, they'll need to apply relativities as detailed above. The relative area in each zone, such as zone B over 2 or zone C over 4, should then be added together to calculate the total ITZA. Again, if you head to our blog, you'll find a really helpful example of how to set this out and carry out an ITZA calculation. It also sets out how you can then devalue an annual rent in terms of ITZA. The comparable evidence can then be analysed on the same basis to provide supporting evidence such as ITZA rental rates to justify your opinion of market rent. As always though, valuation is a mixture of science and art and it's up to you to analyse the evidence, apply this to the subject property and then stand back and look. The comparables of course need full investigation into the terms of the deal and any influencing factors such as if a tenant was unrepresented or there was very limited nearby supply, to be able to value the subject diligently. In some locations for very small units, where all or almost will be zone A space, a cross-check using a global rent may be appropriate. 
And finally today, what are allowances? So there's a number of allowances, deductions or additions that may be required to reflect the specific physical characteristics of the subject property. These should be derived from similar comparables and your market experience. Typical examples include return frontages, double frontages, narrow frontages, large units known as quantum, masking, so where the columns interrupt the retail space, and hard frontages, where there's a lack of windows or glazed frontages, typically found in bank properties. Again, there's no set allowances and you should look to the evidence for appropriate percentages to apply. That's it for today's podcast. Remember, you can book in your free 15-minute consultation via our website. We can also provide feedback on your referral or prelim review report. If you head to our website, you can also access our other free support resources, including our ebook guides, podcasts, videos, quizzes, blog and CPD newsletter. We can't wait to work with you, so thank you for listening and I'll see you next week.